Today I want to prove to you how easy product photos can be without a whole lot of technical skills or fancy tools, just your camera, Photoshop, and some other household items. First you'll need a piece of paper, maybe two just to be safe, your products, which in my case is my partner's face lotion, don't tell her I took them, and a camera like your phone, or for me, the camera that I'm currently recording this video with. Finally, you'll need a window or a white light, which I'll be using this LED panel I use in all my videos, link below if you want to check it out, but otherwise you may be able to get away with your phone's flashlight depending on the size of your product. Oh, and you'll need Photoshop too. I guess that's kind of important. All right, our gear is assembled. Let's go take some photos. First, I'll place my piece of paper against a cup for support, then place my product near the edge of that paper. For good luck, I'll also add a second piece of paper to catch more of the shadow. Now I'll flick on my light and point it at the product, but this could also be your camera flashlight or even an LED lamp if you have that too. Next, you want to frame the photo so the white paper can be seen all around the edges of the product so that this will make life easier when it comes time to cut out the product in Photoshop. And if you're photographing multiple products like I am, putting your camera on a tripod is a good idea to make sure that all of your framing is identical across every photo. Your camera settings don't really matter as long as it's properly exposed, but ideally you want to shoot with an aperture of f11 or greater to ensure the whole product is in focus and you don't have too shallow of the depth of field. Once you're done, import your photos and bring them into Photoshop. In my case, I'll be working with some pretty well-loved bottles of lotion, so I'll need to use the clone stamp tool and the healing brush tools to touch them up. I'll leave a video up in the corner right now if you're not sure how to use those tools because they're a bit outside of the scope of today's tutorial. Then you'll need to cut out each of the products with the pen tool along with a second path around the shadow to place it on its own layer as well. Again, if you aren't sure how to use the pen tool, I'll leave some resources down below to learn more. And now that that's parts out of the way, let's work through the rest of this together here in Photoshop, first creating a new document for our product photo. To create a new document, we'll just go to File, New, and then we'll type in our desired dimensions. In this case, 3000 by 2300 pixels with a 300 pixels per inch resolution. We'll click create. Now we have that new document in a separate tab. Going back over to my images, I need to cut out both the product and the shadow from my image. So since I already did this previously, I just saved my pen path as a work path. So I'll just reactivate that by holding command or control, clicking on that thumbnail to reactivate that selection. And now going to that image layer, I can just click on the layer mask icon to remove that background. Now, before we move this into our new product photo, I also need to select the shadow like I said. So I'm going to press command or control J to duplicate that image layer. Then I'll right click on that layer mask and choose delete layer mask. Now we'll grab our pen tool by pressing P, zoom in, and we can just go and make a rough selection around the edge of our shadow here. Something like this. Connect to the beginning, right click, go to make selection, put in 0.5 feather radius and click OK. Now with the selection active and our duplicated layer selected in the layers panel, we'll add a layer mask again for the shadow and I will drag this below our main image layer. I'll call this to shadow and I'll call this one to main product. Now you'll need to repeat this process with any other products that you have. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my other lotion bottle really quickly. Now let's go and bring our images into our other document. But before I do that, since I have some spot removal layers because I had to touch up all these bottles with the clone stamp and the healing tools, I'm gonna to shift click both those and then press command or control E to merge them onto one layer for my product. Now I'm gonna shift click both those layers, grab my move tool by pressing V and then move this up and over over to my new project like so. Click yes, and then I'll zoom out and scale this down for now to something like this. Now, before we bring in the next product, we're gonna create the area that our product is going to sit on. And we're gonna do that with two different shape layers. But what we can do to make this look realistic is use the original image and use the countertop that it was sitting on to get the right angle for our shape. That way, it actually looks like our product is sitting on something. So to do this, I'll click on the one layer that I have an image with, which is the shadow layer. And I'll press command or control J to duplicate it. Then I'll right click on the layer mask and go to delete layer mask. And I'll drag this down below everything else. I'll turn off these other layers for now. Now what we can see here is the angle that the countertop is at. So we wanna replicate that with a shape. So grabbing the rectangle tool by pressing U on our keyboard, we'll set the shape just to a gray color for now, or a light gray color. And make sure our stroke is set to transparent by clicking this box here. Now I'll click and drag out just to create a basic rectangle like so. And now we need to transform it to fit our countertop or the plane that our products will sit on. So I'll press Command or Control T and then hold Command or Control and then just drag these anchor points wherever we want to basically match the angle of our table. And an easy way to tell is just by looking at the edges here. So we have a clear edge on this side here and down here as well. So as long as I'm matching the rough 
angle of each of these sides, I should be left with a shape that matches the original plane that our photo was taken on. So then that way we have a, the most realistic possible effect. I'll then move this down a little like so, maybe lift up this corner a touch. And that way we have the shape extending right from the corner of our frame. Now we're gonna create one more shape to make it look like a pedestal or something. So we're gonna add the shape in this way. I'm gonna click elsewhere on my layers panel so that my original shape layer is deselected. And now I'll click and drag out on my canvas once again to create another shape. But this time I'll make the color a little bit different so we can separate the two of them a bit. The color right now doesn't matter because we'll do some touching up of that later on in the video. But for now, we're going to drag this below our original rectangle shape and then we'll press Command or Control T once again. And then holding the Command or Control keys, we're going to drag this to match the point there down over this way and then down here as well. So we're basically making a box. Now, if you zoom in, you just wanna make sure there's no gaps between the two shapes. So it looks like one cohesive piece. And zooming out, we now have successfully created our box for our products to sit on. So that means I can delete my reference countertop layer back here. Turning back on my two product layers, now let's go and blend this into this new area. Since our main product and the shadow are on different layers, it's gonna make life easy if we shift click these and click the link icon. That way, when we click one layer, the other layer will move with it and you don't have to think about that anymore. Anymore. But obviously the problem here is our shadow does not look very good. So we need to click on that shadow layer and we need to change this layer blending mode from normal down here to multiply. Now with this layer mask selected, we'll grab a brush tool by pressing B, make sure that black is set to our foreground color or our brush opacity at 100% and we'll use the soft round brush. Now I'll go and paint around the edges like so to remove the harsh edges of the shadow. And then we'll add a curves adjustment layer to do the rest of the work clicking the curves adjustment layer, adding a clipping mask so it only affects our shadows layer. I'll drag up the highlights like so, and maybe a little bit of the shadows. And now going back to our shadow layer mask, I can just brush over this a little bit more to touch that up. If you end up having issues with leftover bits of the shadow, just continue to brighten up the curves until you're happy with the shadow that you have. In this case, that looks pretty good to me there. Since there's a little bit of color left over, we need to add one more adjustment, which is the black and white adjustment layer. So adding the black and white adjustment layer, adding a clipping mask. So now our shadow has no color hue whatsoever. Now, before we bring in our next product, I'm gonna just grab my move tool and then shuffle this over into the area that I would like it to be in. Finally, to keep everything organized, I'll shift click, press command or control G to group that, and I'll call this to product one. Now let's do the same thing with the second product, but I'll go through it a little bit faster so you don't have to sit through all the steps again. Once again, I'm just merging my product image with the clone stamp adjustments I've made, pressing command or control E to merge. I'll then shift click both these layers, grab my move tool, click and drag it into my new project, drop it in there, press yes. And now rescale this to the position that it should be in. Now this bottle is a little bit bigger than the other one, so I'm gonna to try to keep those proportions similar in my project. Now once again, we're gonna link those layers. So while both of these are selected, I'll press the link icon, and now we need to remove the shadow, or I guess blend it in. So with the shadow layer selected, I'll change the layer blending mode from normal down here to multiply, and then we'll go with our brush tool and a black brush, with the soft round brush selected, I'll go and paint around the harsh edges here just to blend it all together a little bit better. Once you have those harsh edges removed, we can add a curves adjustment layer, add a clipping mask, to our shadows layer, and then drag this up a little to blend that shadow in seamlessly. Again, if it's not blending nicely, you can just brighten up the curves a little bit more and then go back with your brush tool and remove any unwanted extra areas that just aren't working for you. Now, in this case, you can see how the shadow is showing up over top of my other product, but I want it to be behind it. So that means I'll shift click all these layers and I'll move it below my product one group. Now that shadow is behind our original product and I can position this into a new spot Something like that works for me. Finally, to finish up the shadow, I'll add a black and white adjustment layer, add a clipping mask, and now our shadow is complete. Now grouping that to keep everything organized, looking at my image so far, obviously the shadows look a little bit weird because they extend off the edge of our box as well as there's not really any shadow underneath our product. So it kind of looks like they're floating. So let's fix that up. First, let's deal with these shadows out here. Holding command or control, I can make a selection of this topmost shape and then I'll press Command or Control Shift and I to invert that selection, which means I can go to the shadow layer, grab the brush tool by pressing B, and with black set to my foreground color, I can go and mask out that area without worrying about coloring outside of the lines and removing the shadow from the main shape. 
I'll do the same thing with my first product, clicking the shadow layer, and once again, removing that area with the same method. Now I'll press Command or Control D to deselect that. Now to add a slightly darker shadow underneath our products, I'll create a new layer just below my product layer, which is just the product by itself here. And then I'm going to grab my brush tool, hold Alt or Option to sample an area of the shadow here. I'll then click on that color and just darken it down a little bit like so, because this is supposed to be like the darkest part of that shadow. Then we'll click OK. Now I'll just scale up my brush with the bracket keys and click once over the areas I want that shadow to apply. I'll then press Command or Control T and then hold the Shift key and just squish this down like so and then move this into position like that. Using this transform box, we can basically create like a little subtle shadow that is sitting right below our product and it's just the dark shadow closest to the edge of our item. Now I'll repeat this process with my other product, clicking on my topmost adjustment layer, adding a new layer so it's just below my product layer. And then I'll once again, with that same color, I'll just click once over my image, press Command or Control T, and then hold the shift key to squish this down, move this up into place, rotate it so it fits a little bit better, and then just play around with this until you're happy with the look that you have going here. In this case, since the light is coming from this direction, I want the shadow to be more dark on this side than obviously in the front where the light is coming from. So now we've created our shapes. It looks like our products are sitting on those shapes, but let's take this a little bit further by adding a nicer background and also adjusting the colors of our shapes so it matches with our products a little bit better. Let's first change the color of our shapes. To make this look the best, we want a lighter color up top and a darker but similar color on the side. So I'll grab my shape tool by pressing U and then I'll click on the fill color, click the color picker, and now I can click anywhere on my photo to sample a color. So let's say I want to choose like this this lighter color that is on this bottle here. So I'm just clicking in the highlight there. Click OK. That'll change the color of that top area. Now going to my side rectangle, which is the side of our box. We can once again click on that fill, go to the color picker, but this time I'll try to find a darker but similar color on my bottle. So let's try this one. For example, we'll click OK. Now we have some sampled colors directly from our products, so it kind of ties everything together nicely. But to make this all look a little bit better, let's add a gradient to the background to make it all come together a bit more. To do this, I'll click on my background layer, then add a new layer just above it. I'll call this to gradient background. Now I'll grab my gradient tool by pressing G, and then I want to choose some soft and light colors to put in the background. So for my shadows, I'm gonna double click on this, sample the darkest edge of my box and then just lighten it up a touch like so. Then for my highlights, I'm just gonna have this set to pure white. Click OK. Now with the radial gradient selected and reverse enabled so that my highlights and my shadows are switched, I'm going to click and drag out to add that background in. Now, depending on how far you drag out, you will change the look of your gradient. And if you wanna learn more about the gradient tool, I have a video here that you can learn more about it in depth. But essentially, I'm just gonna drag around until I have a look that I'm happy with. I want that bright highlight to be mostly around the products or right behind our products, I should say. And I want it to be super, super soft. So something like this looks good for me. Now this is looking pretty good, but I'd like to take it one step further by adding some hidden shadows just around the edges as well as the bottom part of our box here. So clicking on my topmost layer, I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna grab my brush tool by pressing B. With a soft round brush still selected, 100% opacity, I'll click and sample the darkest color of my box and then darken this color down just a little bit more, like so. Now with this layer set to multiply, I'll begin painting over my image. In this case, it's a little bit too intense. So I'll change my brush opacity to 20% by pressing two on my keyboard. And I'll go and paint over these areas to add some shadows around there, mostly just along the bottom of the box. Now from there, you could go and add some individual adjustments to your products just by going into your product groups and then adding some adjustment layers above it, adding a clipping mask, and then doing some contrast or color adjustments to make everything blend a little bit better. I'm just gonna add a little bit of contrast to each of those layers or those product layers just by using the curves adjustment. But of course, you can go crazy with this and add any color adjustments or things like that that 
you would like. And now looking at that before and after, we've taken those regular photos just with a piece of printer paper and turned them into something that looks a little bit more high class, a high end product photo, if you will. And it was actually pretty easy to do with just a couple of shapes and some gradients. So if you enjoyed today's video and you followed along, make sure to hit that like button down below. And of course, if you choose to share this with me or share this effect that you just created, make sure to tag me on Instagram at burnwells so I can check it out. I'd love to see the creations that you guys do with this effect. As you saw in this tutorial, Photoshop has an endless list of things that you can do with it, but there's six particular things that I think everyone should be starting with. And that's what I talk about in my free ebook called the Photoshop Blueprint. I'll leave a link for that down below if you're interested in checking that out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed creating this today. My name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.